Hello, I'm Kari Harju from Robocorp and I'm here to give you a short talk about RCC and how to take control of your robot framework runs. Let's get started. So I'll start with the use cases, then go through a bit of a, the mentality behind RCC and how, how we see it, and then give a short demonstration around the, the playwright environments and, and what to do there. So, uh, these use cases highlight the thing that we run into the most, that there are solutions to these, these individual use cases, but none of them actually work on the other use cases. So this is kind of setting the plane table on the level that, that we're looking at, at from our point of view. So uh, guiding things in your readme, uh, it works for developers uh, to the to extent, but what happens when you're dealing with less savvy people who are not even reading the documentation? And also, are you actually sure that the other developer is running what you actually kind of guided? The other one is the CI machine. So how long does it actually take you to set up a new CI machine to run multiple different robots? So thinking about the maintenance on, on CI machines with different Pythons and, and things like this. Then I'll toss in a bit of an RPA hook so basically, how do you run your robot on the machines of 800 uni university students that do not have any uniform IT management to do anything for them? So that's a challenge and a half. And then the last one that is not necessarily bound to just our RPA, but being able to execute robot in the environment in environments where you actually have to scan all of the files that are going in. So basically air gap systems where you need to run virus scanners and malware scanners before any file gets in. Not just your robot files, not just your pip dependencies, but everything your robot needs. So that is, is the challenge. The mentality that we have come up with is that basically we need to start thinking about both the robot and the robot environment as a code. So kind of this environment as a code, uh, infrastructure as a code mentality. But to do that, you need the tool chain su to support it. So this is not just pip installations. You need to get more stuff into the environment and you, you, you need to have much more control than you do with just kind of guiding the basic setups. You also want to control the setup next to your robot code. So if you have a version control, having it there and ready to go is i think the only way only way forward so what rcc brings to the table is the fact that we can build cache and the biggest biggest one now we can export and import environments from one machine to another it has to be windows to windows mac to mac linux to linux but we can export these environments and that's a big deal in 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 some of the use cases and the the Main point is that there's nothing specific in RCC to RPA, test automation, Python, or robot. It's for all. It doesn't really care what you're running. RCC is dealing with files, and it has a lot of capabilities that I cannot touch in this talk. So I'll, I'll focus on the environment side, but it's good to know that it's not just for the RPA cases. It is for everybody. So one of the big things that we are able to do there is we are able to load applications. So things like Firefox, Node, uh, Nginx, uh, compilers, terraforming uh, tools, whatever. Gondaforts is a thing that you do not need to know about, but we use it and we really kind of recommend checking out. There are a lot of things there. We have great tooling around the resolution. So Micromump and a lot of a lot of other smaller snakes in this plane, but you do not need to know about them. You just need to use RCC and you can get things done. So we are able to run a Playwright robot without having anything pre-installed on the target machine. And I mean anything. So you do not need to have a Python on the machine to run a robot. And here, insert Jared Butler imitation. This is RCC. So let's jump into the demo. Uh, I'll use the Playwright example as, as an example, just because it, it really highlights quite well the capabilities that we have in RCC. 
and I, I'll also highlight a couple of RCC specific. So here I'll pull a a template playwright robot from a public GitHub just to kind of show that we have other stuff in RCC as well. Uh, instead of looking at in the terminal, I'll open up VS Code code for us to look at so that we can get a bit better view into it. So what do we have in a robot like this? So you can have your robot logic just like normally. Here I only have a, because this is a template, it's only a really simple thing that opens a browser and it uses the Playwright browser library to do that. But the key things that I like to highlight are the robot YAML and the Conda YAML. So robot YAML defines your robot. This is the beating heart. Here you can define uh, the actual Python command. So all the parameters and stuff like that, you can place them here, which leads to uh, benefits down the line. And also the, the environment control is in here. The thing that I like to highlight at this point is that we have these freeze files. Whenever you run with RCC, you get this kind of a freeze file into your output folder. And that has all of your dependencies locked down to the version that you can just take to the root of your robot. And then your environment is locked in a way that you could you can pretty reliably rebuild it and not have uh, the PIP resolutions messing up any, anything or the member resolutions changing anything on, on that front. But the big thing is in the Conda YAML. So we do not use Conda anymore. We use Micromamba, but, uh, but the name stuck. So that's why it's Conda YAML. But you don't need to know anything about Conda or actually you don't even need to know that much about PIP or Conda because you can just contain everything here. And this highlights the biggest part of the environment uh, control that RCC brings to the table. We're defining what Python version we use. We're defining what PIP version to use. This is really critical if you take a different PIP version, your dependency resolution might change drastically. So it is good to lock down versions. But we also take in Node. And we need the Node to initialize Playwright. So this Playwright script and in the RCC pro post install scripts is executed inside this uh, environment. And the critical point, none of these are installed on your machine. So these are just files on your on your machine. We're not messing up the, uh, the OS level and we're isolating the robot execution from the OS, OS level items. So you control what the robot is running in. And this is the environment that the robot is running in. And then we take from BIP, we take the browser library and RPA framework. So this kind of highlights the fact that you can get a lot of things here. You could be loading uh, as I said, Firefox, Terraform, all of these toolings in, in the uh, Condaforts part of the file, and then load stuff from pip on top of it, and then execute whatever scripts you like on, on that front. There are other features, as I said, uh, on, on, on RCC as well around these topics, but I'll jump into a bit further. So let's just run this robot. Because of robot YAML, I didn't have to say anything except RCC run. It detects the robot YAML in the root of the robot, finds the task and executes it. And there, just a normal robot output, nothing fancy about this, but the critical part is above this. So as I said, we know all the versions that are coming from Con Condaforts. We know all the dependencies coming from PyPy and we know all of their versions. The output shows even dependency drift, if you happen to hit upon it, you can see it in this output. But the key thing here is that that happened awfully fast. And the reason for that is that I have built this environment previously. Uh, the full build for a Playwright environment on my machine takes around two minutes because we're downloading the browsers. We're running the uh, RF browser init script, which is running node installs and stuff like that. So it's a hefty chunk. It's uh, one gigabyte of stuff to come in. But once it's in the RCC cache, I can get it up and running in seconds because we're only moving local files into a workspace that where we run, uh, run stuff in. So this kind of caching becomes really, really powerful. And RCC also keeps things, uh, keeps things clean and isolated. So whenever you run 
uh, RCC makes sure that the files in your workspace are exactly the files that were there when you uh, executed in the in the first place. So basically, if I if I ask the question, what's the difference between Robot Framework Browser, the latest major version of browser library, and the previous ones? What I do is I do this. I can see that the difference is exactly 285 files have changed. And suddenly I have the environment that is using the newer version. Because it's coming from the cache, we're only moving a couple of files and we're done. Now, and it's also showing how little things changes. And this is why the caching is actually as powerful as it is. Between Python versions, only a few files change. So we store unique files. And that's where why we get to the state that we, we get into. So OK, now we have uh, environments in our cache, but we want to move them to another file, uh, to another system. So let's package and export the environment for this robot. What we do now is we get a simple zip file. It takes it takes what it takes, basically. But what we're doing now is we're taking those unique files in that environment and we're creating a zip file. We can take that to another Windows machine, import it, and by that means we're able to build production machines that never have to build environments. So they don't need to spend time running the PIP resolutions and the MAMBA resolutions. They can just get the files and never even contact the outside world. So this is the way to solve the air capture system. But this is also a big thing in production machines. As I said, we have we have machines where we can share these uh, the caches inside a VM uh, machine. So we have Windows VMs that are running 16 uh, separate users running robot executions in parallel. So all of these are using the same cache because there we definitely do not want to for each of them to build in their own environments. Now, that's where the game changing part comes into. Uh, the, the cache sharing inside scaled cloud containers, that's where the big deal is. It's, it's a game changer. Uh, because when we hit upon a unique Conda.yaml, we build it once and we distribute it to the container machines. Because RCC is storing unique files that are immutable, when we get a new environment, we only need to move a couple of changed files and new files into the executor machines. So it, it becomes not just a game changer, but basically an environmental fact uh, act kind of that you're not spending CPU power and time on compiling the, uh, the environments and doing that stuff. You're just using the environments and you can get them up and running in seconds and you're spending the time actually executing your robot. So jumping back to my fancy slides, what are the takeaways? The big thing, the environments can be imported, exported and imported as simple zip files. So they are controlled. You're controlling them with, your, with the, those two uh, config files. RCC will keep your uh, execution space uh, pristine. So even if you mess up the environment, the very next run will detect dirty files and remove them and get them fixed up. And the big thing is that your robot runs should not mess with your OS and your OS should not mess with your robot runs. They can still interact, but when you install stuff, they shouldn't kind of break things. Uh, on the caching proficiency on my machine, at the moment I have 51 different robot environments. Uh, fully open, they would be 21 gigabytes, almost 600,000 files. But when cached, it's a tenth of that. And that's the power of the caching side. And yeah, what's the difference between two versions of a uh, uh, browser? It's a couple of percent of files that change. So we need to leverage that. And the big, big, big thing is that when moving to scaled cloud container runs and these really big runs, you should not be, we, we cannot spend time building environments and rebuilding them. We need to get them locked down, down to the file. And that's what, that's what RCC provides. So I started the talk by saying that RCC is just nothing. <laughs> it's, it's not just for anything, but in the end, it's just a Go executable. Uh, we have it available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. 
the open source repository is at github.com slash repocorp slash rcc. And I'd be remiss to not give a shout out to our grandmaster of RCC, Yippo. So yeah, Yippo is the, is, is the wizard behind it. And we've been working on this now for almost two years. And let's just say that the, the things that we have solved in the background, making this work across platform is, is nothing short of a minefield of different things. So big, big props to Mr. Yippo on the background. And the, the final, final takeaway. Uh, I know I've been using uh, uh, the Playwright browser as the example. So I have to say that the browser library actually has quite a good insta uh, installation guide. So it looks like this. But still, would you rather have people reading through this, installing Python, installing Node, updating pip, yada, 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 or just have this in your repository and type in RCC run. That's my ending token. So now on to the questions. Thank you.